Hello everybody, this is Kay Strashny from Dedicated. We're in Las Vegas at reInvent 2024. I stopped by the IBM booth to talk to Heather. Heather, how are you doing today? Doing great, it's nice to see you. Yes, you too, I've been following your work on social media. I love all your content, so thanks for sharing with the community. I think a good place for us to start is tell the audience a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so it's great to meet all of you in the audience. My name is Heather Gentile, and I'm head of product for What's Next Governance at IBM. And how long have you been with IBM? I've been with IBM about six years now. Okay. Um, started managing the RegTech team, and then that gradually morphed into a focus on AI governance. And when we wa launched Watson X at Think in 2023, things just took off, all AI related. I love that. So we're at reInvent AWS. So I wanted to ask, how do you guys actually partner with AWS? Oh, in so many ways. But selfishly, I'll tell you a little bit about our recent collaboration. Um, we had mutual clients who were very interested. They were invested in AWS SageMaker, but loved the value proposition of what's next governance. And at IBM, we have a client engineering team. And as our clients were starting to experiment with generative AI, they were able to work with our client engineering team at no cost oh, wow. to prove out use cases and objectives to see how the technology would work for them and how they could really start to adopt generative AI. And many of those clients were SageMaker clients. Oh, great. They build and train and deploy in SageMaker. So the opportunity became, can we use What's Next Governance to govern SageMaker? And the answer was yes. Of course. <laughs> we did a great whiteboarding session and walked through the workflow in SageMaker and what a user is actually doing and was able to integrate governance in support of that natural workflow. So SageMaker clients don't have to stop and wait and say, I need to think about governance. I have a checklist. It's done automatically. We're doing all the documentation capture. We start at the time the use case is requested. Okay. And then they can actually use What's Next Governance dashboards oh. to see all of the metrics that they need to be aware of. I love that. So you no longer have people that are starting projects and then later, six months later, they're like, oh, I think we need governance now. No, we <laughs> integrate a full audit trail. Good. So if they need to report up to their AI governance committees, their board, their regulators, all of that is housed in a one repository. Amazing. So I know Gen AI has been around for a bit now, but people are still struggling with it. I know Gardner talks about this, and I think a lot of people are saying we need better data, data quality, data governance. So how does this partnership with IBM and AWS help address those struggles? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think the major value proposition, or how we've made it easy, is that any SageMaker client can just deploy what's the next governance from the AWS micro marketplace, yeah. and everything's pre-integrated. And we've got the best practices workflow right there. Um, so they don't have to think about how to enforce their governance programs with a little bit of configuration that matches their priorities. They're able to do that automatic capture and have the full audit trail. Oh, great. So I know a lot of companies won't really do data governance unless they're told to, right? And a lot of times there are regulated industries. Do you think that there's regulatory pressure to get AI governance right Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, I think especially looking at what's happening in Europe with the EU AI Act, yep. one thing we've seen, and this is another big partnership between AWS and IBM, is with our consulting team, clients in Europe especially are embarking on these innovation of AI governance programs. Because even if they've successfully adopted predictive ML for years, yeah. that was often done as siloed product projects for individual business units. And here, in order to scale AI across the enterprise, they're really taking a step back and looking at what is our best practice and how do we want to evolve our AI governance framework. Yeah. And the great news is that technology can operationalize all of that. I love so that. So using automation, we push out the best practice, and that's what everyone in the enterprise follows consistently as they adopt AI responsibly. Great. Do you think some of those industries that are not regulated, do you think they should also follow what's, let's say, in the AI Act? It's good risk management. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we're seeing even in the U.S. states modeling their own legislation after that act. Yeah. So it's coming. Like, the time is now to invest in your current program. 
understand any weaknesses and make sure you have the right controls in place. Yeah. And having gov- real time monitoring as part of your governance technology is such a great way to do continuous control management. I agree. So Heather, here's um, a crystal ball. Mm-hmm. Pretend it's there. <laughs> Take it. Now look into the crystal ball and tell us what do you think is coming up in the next couple of years and as it relates to AI governance? Yeah. So I think it will remain exciting for sure. Um, what we saw coming into the second half of this year is a lot of those clients we were working with to experiment with generative AI are ready to move into production, which is exciting. But as they move to production, you really have to think about security yeah. and protecting those models at runtime. Yeah. So we see a lot more involvement from the CISOs. We see a, a focus on new types of detectors and guardrails at runtime to protect against things like jailbreaking or prompt injections and those types of things. Um, the other thing that has become a very hot topic is AI agentic systems. Yes. Um, so think about multiple AI models working together in automation. And with governance, human in the loop is a best practice. Yeah. So as organizations move to experimenting with agentic AI systems, that's an area of strategy in our roadmap where we're looking at where can we govern in an integrated way? It's not disruptive, yeah. but it helps to control risk and it helps with compliance. Yeah, that's definitely something you need to get right because mm-hmm. it's no longer just humans doing the work, right? right? It's the agents that could do it in a much, much quicker, real-time way. So you really have to be careful and get those guardrails in place. And I think that uh, if we talk about trust for a second, I think all those security measures and guardrails, that could probably build some more trust in some of these Gen AI models, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a combination um, because you need a broad library to be effective. Yeah. So guardrails are a tremendous area of investment for us at IBM. And we do a lot of work directly with IBM Research in Yorktown Heights, New York. Okay. Um, My team is so like lucky to have these talented individuals who are looking at the different risks related to generative AI and including ongoing predictive ML risks. Yeah. And we add to our capabilities for monitoring in every release. Amazing. Well, Heather, I want to thank you for your time. But the final question, please tell the audience, where can they go to learn more about all the great things that IBM is working on? Absolutely. Come visit us at IBM.com. We have a What's Next Governance landing page where you'll see best practices, free tools, and even the ability to sign up for a demo or a free trial account. Amazing. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you.